Hi, I am Michael Bohovsky. And I'm Katie Horner. And we are the programming directors for Musical Lab, a nonprofit dedicated to developing new musical theater right here in Philadelphia. And today we'll be talking with composer and lyricist Charlie Gilbert about his new musical Goose Feathers, which will have its developmental workshop with us here at Musical Lab. Yep. Uh, Charlie has been writing musicals for over 40 years, and he taught musical theater for over 30 years at the University of the Arts, and eventually chaired the program. Mm -hmm. Goose Feathers will have its public performance uh, on August 26th, that's a Saturday, at 2 and 7 p.m. at the Proscenium Theater at the Drake in Philadelphia, and you can get your tickets right now at musicallab.org. And you really should, mm -hmm. and we hope to see you there, and here's Charlie. You mentioned this term, Commedia dell'arte, that sounds like something I heard in my theater history class. Uh, can you talk about how something, you know, uh, an older art form can connect to today's audiences? Just pretending for a moment that we didn't pay attention in uh, theater history class, totally. which well, we definitely well, did. I as, did. As, 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 as someone who taught theater history for a lot of years, I know that sometimes <laughs> things kind of sail over, over, over the heads of the crowd, but- uh, We just want to hear them again. <laughs> yes. Well, we, there'll be no quiz at the end of this, I promise. But the, the, I, actually, I actually kind of love love the Commedia. The Commedia dell'arte is a form that, that originated in the Renaissance in Italy. And in some ways, it really is the beginning of the professional theater, the idea that actors were entertainers who would get paid uh, for their work. Uh, a Commedia troupe was a traveling troupe of a handful of, of very versatile artists um, I kind of think of it like, you know, if you were an indie rock band today, you know, you'd get together and kind of form your band and make up your, your set list and go on the, you know, go on the road with your van. Well, this was the Renaissance equivalent of this. There was no particular training or your degree that you needed to have in order to do this. And so it was very much a DIY kind of theater. People were creating it themselves and creating characters, uh, based on the, you know what what uh, what pleased the audience what amused the audience it was topical it drew on like characters of the day and topics that were relevant you know to that were that were being discussed in in, in the village square um, but it also drew on these kind of familiar uh, archetypal characters like like the the miserable old man or the 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 foolish uh, incompetent servant or the clever conniving servant you know there were certain set character types that were part of the Commedia, and it was very physical. The the kind of slapstick and rough and tumble uh, was was very much a a part of the style. In addition, there was music, there was dancing. Uh, the company did all of the you know the, the the setting up of the scenery and you know the handing out of handbills in the town when they got to the town. So it was a, very much a I, th I think of it as a like I say a do it yourself kind of theater style. Um, it's uh, informed or influenced a lot of uh, a lot of more contemporary uh, theater styles. You see it in like contemporary situation comedy now, and on you know on TV and video, a lot of those uh, kind of draw on the 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 the, the archetypes and the stereotypes of, of the Commedia dell'arte. And when the script that Steve had. Uh, really captured the spirit uh, of the Commedia as well as that kind of rough and tumbled slapstick quality. And, and it was a great vehicle for people who were virtuoso clowns, just great performers who had that ability to, to, to make an audience laugh. And, and I think that's the thing that remains true uh, of the Commedia. There aren't a lot of musicals that draw on this Commedia style. I mean, funny thing happened on the way to the forum is Roman comedy, which is a sort of forerunner of Commedia. So in some ways, it's a lot like Forum, if people know Forum, that style. But again, you know, the, the servants and the masters and and and, uh, and the kind of mistaken identities and so on. Um, there is a Commedia musical called The Glorious Ones that uh, Aaron's and Flaherty wrote at the uh, Dunn at Lincoln Center Theater about 20 years ago that was about a Commedia troupe, but it's not a not something that's been used a lot in musicals. That leads me into my next question. So in what ways you mentioned that part of the appeal of the Commedia back in the day uh, was kind of its use of topical subjects. So in what ways have you sort of blended the classic with the modern in approaching this new piece? Well, I think that uh, 
it it is modern and it's contemporary in that it has to speak to a contemporary audience. So I try to use uh, we, both of Steve and I use language, use uh, rhythms, use uh, images that are that are going to be familiar to a contemporary audience. Use uh, uh, jokes that often refer to you know things that a contemporary audience would be familiar with. Uh, so we're really trying to make it make it fresh and feel like it is, you know, funny in the in the present, not like it's some museum piece. Yeah, and I can personally attest to that as again someone who performed the song. I know that you have a rhyme scheme that includes both the words humdinger and bling. So clearly you're you're blending these words these worlds pretty funnily yeah yeah well i i, I mean as as a, as a lyricist i had i had a great time with you playful everything about the commedia is lang is playful the language is playful the music is playful the movement is playful uh everything is really designed to entertain and and to to um, get a laugh from the audience charlie thank you so much for speaking with us about this exciting project and for giving us a brush up theater history lesson which we um, always need. We always do. <laughs> and uh, for those of you watching, we would so love for you to join us. This is going to be an incredible event. It's going to be on Saturday, August 26th at the Proscenium Theater at the Drake in Philly. We have two performances. That's two. You heard me right. Two entire performances. Two performances at 2 p.m. and at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. Please check out our website, musicallab.org. And it's going to be great. All right. See you then. <laughs>